The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets picking up pretty much where we left off last week with lower prices across the board right now. S&Ps, you see the sell-off. I got the chart up here on a five-minute basis. We are actually below the lows of Friday. That sell-off began about 3.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Went to bed last night. Markets positive by five, ten points. You challenge that 43.80 price point, and then boom. Just like that, markets trade down a solid 35 points from where you were at, right? From 43.80, which was positive, pushing almost 20 points to the positive side. In the span of about a half hour, markets dive down 35 points. We're just below that price level right now. You're almost 40 points below where you were coming into that 3.30 p.m., 3.30 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, just pointing it out because markets say you're down by 17, but boy, we got some volatility with the S&Ps almost selling off 40 points, and we are basically at pre-market session lows as we speak. NASDAQ 100, we're off by 66, also below the lows of Friday, below the lows of Thursday as well. You get the Dow right now off 113, up, oh, I may sneeze, uh, at 34,120. We had a 35,000 handle on Wednesday, almost a thousand points below where you were trading at as of Wednesday this morning, and the Russell off by 11 points. You jump over to crude, holding that $90 price point pretty well right now at 90.13. Gold contract, 1944, pretty much where you chopped around Thursday and Friday as well. And we jump to the all important notes and bonds. What do we got? Lower price, higher yield, coming at you. We're challenging the lows of Thursday, 108.09. The low of Thursday, 108.08 on the 10 year. You jump to the two year, basically flat. So not quite the same scenario, right? Interesting. Excuse me, in terms of the yields on the 10 year going up, the two year basically remaining flat. We know the story there, right? Higher for longer for a period of two years. Where we go over 10 years, that's quite an interesting question. The 30 year down a full point and 16 ticks well below. So, what do we got? The longer end of the curve going up on yield, man. Now, that's one way for the curve to get to be no longer inverted, right? To be uninverted is you don't have yields. On the short-term basis come down what do you have you have a recalibration of the longer-term yields going up across the board and uh that's what's happening right now man you jump over to the dollar index what's that doing it's putting strength into the dollar index excuse me 105.78 right now we just hit 105.81 on the dollar index you jump over the vix how about an 18 handle going up on the vix 18.33 13.57 was where we were for the fed last week and we're now challenging the highs of August, which was 1888, we're at 1833. Uh, you can see well off the lows that we had basically been chopping around in since the beginning of June. Excuse me, one second here. Thought I was going to sneeze. I'm okay. Uh, all right, let's jump around and where do we kick things off? Let's kick things off with a little streaming. They got a deal going on, and let's jump over to the headline. Where are we? There we are. Reach a tentative deal to end the strike. Initial votes on the pact by the union boards could come by Tuesday. We know how this goes, right? They got a tentative deal. They got to go to a vote. Seems like it will happen, but we will see once it comes uh, due. The focus will shift to reaching a deal with the actors union now. Seems like they, they should be in step to some degree. Um, it's ending. There's how it happened. Nonetheless, you got Netflix trading higher. You got Disney trading higher. 11,500 writers is what they represent. Said Sunday it reached a deal with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. Seems like people thought that this was coming, right? I talked about it last week. We had Bill Maher was going to go forward with his program saying, you know, we can't do a whole season. We're not going to give up a whole year. Seemed like they were coming back to the table. They thought there was hope. He said, you know what? If there's hope, we're going to hold off here. We're not going to come back if there's hope. And uh, if agreed, excuse me, the agreement, if approved by the Guild members, will end a strike that began May 2nd. So you're talking about, what, almost five full months on strike here. The three-year deal remains subject to 
the completion and contract language and recommendations from the union's council and board, which, is come, which could come as soon as Tuesday. Annual pay for working film and TV writers declining. Yeah, they just go over some of the bullet points that we've been talking about for some time here. Nonetheless, there's Netflix. <clears throat> A very small reprieve for Netflix shares as you're basically back to where you were trading at at 1 in the afternoon on Friday. You jump over to Disney. Same deal, right? No quite reprieve there. You know, I tell you, I was looking at Disney this weekend, man. Listen, I got a bearish trade in the market in my newsletter, okay, that goes out at least. It's an options trade looking for some action to the downside that we initiated last week going out till the next Fed meeting, okay, because, man, I don't see a lot of optimism in this market going out to November 1st, right? October might be a tough month, man, as we got student loan payments beginning yet again. We have interest rates remaining high, um, and we have a market that's been euphoric for some time on multiples that are getting a little lofty by anyone's standards. So with that said, right, thinking that the market could potentially have a pullback, we've talked about this before. You take a look at the daily. You take this area. It's looking more and more attractive, man. When I was talking about this last week, we were at about 4,400 saying, hey, it's only 200 points away. That 4,200 price point, we're only 140 points away now. You take the Fibonacci retracement area from the one-way move we had basically from March up to the highs of July. The 382 brings you back to about 4327. The 618 brings you back to about 4150. That's the bottom of this area that I've created here, okay? And then in the end, they were talking about, rightfully so, you take the low that we had back in this market, you take that trend, and the 382 brings you at about 4200. You got an area of confluence, folks, which is two different Fibonacci retracement areas from two different trends and they line up with an area of about 50 60 points in which i think what i think is so cool is this area was an area of support for some time it could turn into an area of resistance uh and maybe that's where this market's going on its first step wouldn't be outlandish okay i mean you're talking about right now i mean what are we at right now This market is 6.34% off of its highs. 6.34% off of its highs in the span of less than two months. So we've given up 6.35%, and all that's talking about is an additional 3% that maybe gets you back to that area of consolidation at about 4,200. I mean, what's the area for the bid right now coming into a new earnings season potentially? That always has the potential to give a lift if we do, but boy, we're talking about higher for longer rates and the market is recalibrating that to a degree. Yes, we have upgraded growth, but boy, we still got inflation kicking, man. We'll see, what, see where we go from there. And you now have the markets below the lows of August 18th. That low, 43.50. We're sitting at 43.42 with about 15 minutes to go until the opening bell. Uh, and no reprieve whatsoever. So what I was going to say, though, didn't quite get there as I explained the market, okay? So Disney might be a buy here, man. I mean, maybe this is the Max Payne situation for Disney. We'll talk a little bit about this when we get back. You're testing the COVID lows. Okay, we get the writer's strike done. We have the pain that they're spending money for the parks. That's out of the picture. We'll talk a little bit more about Disney when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down about 15 points right now. All the markets in the red as we kick off Monday trading. I got a chart up here of Disney. Uh, I'm going to have to take some of these graphics off here. But it doesn't get much more simple as in testing the COVID lows, right? You're back to that area. You're testing the COVID lows. We got a spike low of $79.07 back then. We just got a low of $79.75. I mean, who would have said that we would have gotten within $1? dollar of the lows when you were trading at 20302 um absolutely remarkable pullback and on a fundamental basis i mean disney paid the price last week when that drop off on tuesday that they're spending tens of billions of dollars over the next 10 years to expand the parks to expand the cruises you want to see that on a longer term basis okay they've now weathered a writer strike they have the actors coming up next uh, as I said, this market, yeah, this market has room for a pullback, but you may see some type of rotations in this market as well as we've seen them. And at some point, Disney will find a bid, folks. And if you've held your hands in your pocket long enough to go from 200 to 160 at the beginning of last year, kicked off this year even at $84, and you're below that with a market that's been positive gangbusters, all right, eventually it's going to right the ship, and I think we might be approaching that area now. I'll give you a little bit more worrisome news, though, on the longer term front, OK, which is, man, this thing had a one way trip almost from the financial crisis lows of 2009 at $15. You were back in 2011 at 29. OK. But you're talking about trading at an area 86 bucks in 2016. You're talking about trading at an area where you get into Disney uh, at 10 years ago prices of 2014 and you take all of that headache out of things now, you know. Keep in mind that this market's sitting at a pretty lofty 43.48, and if you do trade lower, everything is going to trade lower. But if you're looking for areas that could potentially have a bid, Disney's finally one that I'm looking at, man, because if the strike is over, that was the one that really could stretch things out. You know that they're spending lots of money on the parks. You know that's going to be profitable, okay? And the multiples are much more in line with where they've been historically. We'll go with some of those at some point as well as I pull them up. But um, no reprieve for the writers that potentially might be back but on a longer term basis man i've talked about it before okay disney's movie schedule you got to go out a couple years but boy you start going out a couple years you're talking about getting two star wars movies okay the year that you get two star wars movies that come the same exact year um within a 12-month period 
that's the Disney of old that accelerated this thing to the prices we're dealing with right now. Because when you back things up, okay, coming into COVID, I think it was 2019, I think they had eight or 10 different movies that all grossed a billion dollars, okay? Those, those have been gone for some time. Uh, the movie slate that they have coming in the next two or three years, it's been a while. I think it's been since 2019, since we have had a Star Wars movie. You're going to have a nice five-year void as those come back, and they're going to hit you with a one-two punch of Star Wars over the period of 12 to 18 months. Now, that could change depending on how this writer strike plays out, right, if that's done by Tuesday, depending on how the actor strike plays out as well. But nonetheless, putting it on the chart, you're getting it at COVID lows right now. Um, yeah, so keep it on your radar, man, as the strike looks to be done, at least for the writers, for some time. Okay, checking out yields. Let's go back to that 10-year. So the 10-year, you're back to where you were in 2007, man, right? Now, shorter-term braces, you put it back on the 10-minute chart, you're challenging. We just hit 108.06, man, 108.06. Now, right now, the 10-year yield above 4.5%, above 4.5, 4.523. How about that, right? The 30-year, 4.637 right now. The trend is just uh, catching up to the new normal, I think, folks. As the dollar index pushes 105.81, we'll see where we go from there. But higher for longer is a new one that the market is coming to grips with and I don't think that the market has fully calibrated for where we're going to be yet I mean, let's take a look at the 30 year for a second okay we go back super long term all right the 30 year seems like a bargain if you only look at this chart since the financial crisis okay if you look at this chart we're trading at 115.07 right now okay Let's take that part off there. We're trading at 115.07 right now. This is what the chart looks like, folks, from basically my later years in high school. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, 1996, I was a sophomore or junior, graduated in 1998. There we go. If you stop this chart in about 2008, I was 28 years old. I was four years out of college. Okay. Point being, the chart is distorted because we have been at low interest rates for some period of time. You take a look at this chart, you only look at it on a basis of before the financial crisis, and what do you look at? You look at the fact that, hey, guess what, man? We got a long way that we could go, okay? We got a long way that we could go in terms of we are actually at what's been an area of high price in the bond when you look at where we are, which would correlate to actually that interest rates are lower than they've been for some time, right? So context is important, focusing only on where yields have been since the financial crisis might get you in trouble, okay? You back it out then, and yeah, you say to yourself, ah, how could I go wrong buying this thing at 115? We were just at 190. Well, keep that in mind, that rates have been distorted for some time during the financial crisis. I think we're coming out of that. I'm not sure if we'll see negative interest rates on a global basis anytime soon and realize that there is room for the 30 year to trade lower in price and higher in yield. And all you have to do is take the financial crisis out of things, okay? So context is important, the market recalibrating a bit. I like the 30 year because it goes back so far. The 10 year, you see, it doesn't even go back that far. That's why the 10 year looks so distorted because you put that on a futures basis and we're only talking about going back to 2002, okay? There's 2008 there. You don't get all the action before then, which can distort how you feel about yields, where they are, when, man, the world has been an interesting place where we've had zero and negative interest rates for some time, to put it lightly, right? All right. Let's check out some of those other streamers. Warner Brothers Discovery. Look at that. They catch a small lift, and then they give it back just like that. No reprieve in these markets right now with the VIX pushing 18, and when you got negative action across the board right now. Let's check out some of the high flyers. The FANG stocks, Amazon shares, tough week for them last week, man. They trade lower this morning. We're trading basically flat right now, actually slightly in the green with a negative market. Amazon up by about 40 cents. Apple, reading about that Apple 15 this weekend. Um, like I talked about, I have a 12 plus. Maybe I'll think about upgrading to a 15 plus, but for, for 1,200 or 1,500 bucks, man, I'm not sure it's happening. It's gonna be really interesting to see 
how this goes forward in terms of people being able to upgrade their phones and if they want to, how many generations do you go until you upgrade? That's the question, right? How many generations? Seems like, you know, the fanboys are always going to upgrade next generation, but for the average consumer which who can afford it, right? Because if I really needed it, if I thought it was advantageous, if I thought it would make sense, and you know, one of the things I read about is they got a five time zoom. I take a lot of pictures with the two year old, two year old Tommy in the house, man. The camera, five time zoom, something I might actually consider. But I am three generations out, okay? Three generations out is what I am. And even then, I'm like, eh, is it worth it? I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know. I'm not quite on the edge yet, but Apple shares basically flat. We jump over to Microsoft shares. They are up, down a dollar right now at 316. NVIDIA shares at 413.93. Stay tuned, folks. Negative markets to kick things off. Going to be an interesting Monday in the markets. We're coming back for the opening bell. Don't go away. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer. But the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets open. You're looking at an S&P down by about 12 points as we kick off the trading session at 43.48. Now the markets put it on a minute basis. Look at the dive. We were just down 10 points lower coming into that, so we pop a bit. You're back to where we were at about 7:45 a.m. this morning, but markets in negative territory as we have yields uh, in focus rising higher. You're talking about a 10-year right now as a level that we have not seen since 2007. Yeah, 2007. There it is. 
4.52 and change, a level last seen in 2007. You got the dollar trading higher as well. And that is going to be a persistent theme as I was talking about, man. And remember, folks, okay, if there's one thing you remember from the show today, remember this chart and what I talked about because that's what I try and remind myself, right? Um, context is important. The financial crisis created yields that we may never see again in our lifetime, okay? <clears throat> I remember our man Larry Pesamento being on the air saying, folks, this is not how it works. You don't give somebody money on the premise that they give you less money back in the future, talking about negative interest rates, right? You give somebody $100, you loan it to them, and they say, no problem, I'll give you back $99 in five years. I say, why would I lend you, right? Well, what happened? Yeah, that's not how things persist, man. If you're if you're familiar with economics, you either consume or you save, right? You have $100. You consume something, you get to consume $100 in the present time with that money. If you save, if you decide to forego consumption, everybody wants to consume everything right now. Why not? Okay? The only reason you don't consume everything right now is because of the idea that if you decide to save, you can consume more in the future. Okay, so that's where interest rates come from. You either consume now or you save. And if you save, you are rewarded for not consuming now, foregoing consumption and saving in the future. That needs a positive interest rate. When you start having a foregoing consumption to consume less in the future, it doesn't make sense. It defies everything. So keep that in mind. Keep the 30 year in mind. Okay, and tell yourself, hey, things seem attractive right now. But guess what? If you take things out of the financial crisis, it doesn't seem so attractive at all. It seems like we're at some actually still relatively low yields when you look at where we've been in different eras of this economy. Okay, we'll leave it at that for sure. Now, staying with yields. Okay, we talk about the 10-year treasury, but here's where CDs sit this morning. Okay, we talk about the ladders all the time. The five-year ladder right now, these are for FDIC-insured bank CDs, non-callable, okay? You see the yields we're dealing with, man. Now, there's two sides of this story. Number one, boy, you got a lot of cash on the sidelines, man, right? You really, the Fed, and this is what the argument was for so long, said, hey, we are at such low interest rates, the economy is doing so well, what happens if we really have some problems in the economy, the Fed's going to have no room to increase the spigot, lower interest rates, get cash back into the economy while well, they have that now. We have some problems in this economy, folks. You're going to have plenty of people that have money parked in cash, whether it's CDs, money markets, etc. And they're doing it because you can have a five-year ladder right now that is pushing five and a quarter percent for five years. And you see the numbers, right? The one year and the two year. Yeah, you're talking about 5.55, 5.35, even a three-year is still above 5%. Your four-year is pushing 4.85, and a five-year CD right now is yielding you 4.75%. So, you know, if you're anywhere on the spectrum of retirement, man, you know, you got a million bucks in retirement. You're, you're pulling 50 grand risk-free, not touching your capital right now with where we are in this market. Uh, might make sense to have some of your portfolio in that you decide how much I am not a financial planner man you know conduct uh, contact your financial planner for that expert advice but I don't think a lot of people realize when they see those numbers how high you can lock them in because CD rates are above where treasuries are okay so you're pushing 5.12 percent right now and meanwhile you get the market 6.3 percent off the highs that we were just at about what two months ago on June 25th. So be careful in this market as we go forward, folks, and make sure that you have the duration to protect yourself. We're fine. The economy is fine. Um, but on a shorter term basis, you need that money over the next five or 10 years, man. Remember how long it takes sometimes this economy to get it back, man. Right? I mean, the, the dot-com bubble is nothing like we got going on right now. But boy, it took seven years to get back to where we were. And then it took another seven years to get back to where we were. So you took 15 years to get back to where we were at the highs. Okay? And that's cherry picking the highs. I get it. But that's 15 years, man. 
with the levels we're dealing with right now in yields, I don't even want to tell you how much you can make risk-free if you got to ride out a 10-year consolidation in this market. And boy, you look at that market like that, and yeah, you might need a little bit of room to digest all the gains we've had from 600 and change all the way up to 4,500 and change in this market. Not screaming death, you know, I'm not screaming it, but make sure you protect yourself. I keep talking about it, but it's very important nonetheless. All right, let's jump around to what else we got going on. And let's see, yeah, we'll talk a little bit of interest rates. Lagarde and the ECB, they're talking about it as well, man. Shouldn't be surprising, shouldn't be headlines, but nonetheless it is. Lagarde repeats the ECB rates to stay restrictive as long as needed. Well, who else thinks, are they not gonna stay re restrictive as long as needed, right? She's still talking about 2% as well. But I think this market is coming to grips with the fact that, hey, the R star might not be 2% going forward. We remain determined to ensure that inflation returns to our 2% medium target in a timely manner, she said Monday in Brussels. Um, they raised their key policy rate to 4% this month, a level most economists and investors reckon will be the peak in more than a year-long campaign. So they think they've peaked out, probably going to try and keep it there for some time the way we are, the same deal. But we'll see how we go from there. All right, some interesting charts from the journal out here in an article. Now, they're talking about that America has a long-term labor crisis, okay? Not exactly sure that's what's in these charts, but it is interesting, nonetheless, some of the charts and what they illustrate here. Labor force participation rate for people age 65 plus with no disabilities, that's quite a drop off. Uh, you're still talking about almost one out of four workers, the age 65 plus are working, okay? You probably have feelings on one way or the other on that. Uh, COVID, probably a reset in a lot of people's minds, man, you know? Life is precious. You never know how long you have, folks. And there are probably a lot of people in there. Number one, whether they had 401k money, they had money in the market, right? You accelerate it from 3,200 to 4,500 and change. Your house probably went up depending where you are, 30 to 40% potentially. All of a sudden, you didn't have to work like you had to, okay? So that's illustrated in a labor force participation rate. Now, the quality of life when you're that age, et cetera, gets better and better. It would make sense that as people begin to live longer and longer that maybe they're able to work at the age of 65, more so than they were previously. Nonetheless, that's not going back to where we were, folks. People had a reset. People in that age group were able to lock in some of those gains to a certain degree. And I imagine that's changed forever to that degree, being out of that workforce. Just not happening as much. Life has changed. We'll talk about some of those other charts. We'll take a look at some of those labor numbers from the journal when we get back, folks. We got the S&Ps, negative by 14, markets in the red. Stay tuned, we'll talk some labor. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors 
investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer. But the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the markets in negative territory with the S&Ps off by about eight points. You catch a little bit of a lift on the open there, but still negative by eight. We have the NASDAQ 100 negative by 12. They catch a little bit of a lift as well. Interesting. Disney, no reprieve whatsoever. Disney basically flat to the penny right now at 81.26. Netflix catching a Basta bid up by 1.5% right now. You jump over Warner Brothers Discovery, actually down 1.5% right now. Paramount down eight tenths percent right now, so no reprieve just yet for the streamers as they potentially got a deal for the writers. Apple shares flat this morning. We jump around to some of the FANG stocks quickly checking in. You got Microsoft basically flat as well. We jump over to Tesla shares off 1.4% right now. We keep our eye on some of the automakers Ford off about four tenths percent right now. GM shares off six tenths percent right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. We jump back to some of those charts on labor. You often hear Elon talk about it, right? Talking about the birth rate, declining birth rates across the board. Um, always an interesting one, man. And, you know, we are in such a small sliver of time, folks, okay? You think about the human lifespan, 80 years, over how long we've all been here, the life of the planet, right? We're In this household, we're big into dinosaurs right now. Uh, dinosaurs, 65 million years ago. <coughs> if you talk about some of those things that the new telescope is reaching, um, Light years, right? A billion light years away, whatever it is, all this just mammoth stuff. I mean, look at these trends, right? The U.S. birth rate per 1,000 people. Now, there's a lot written here, whether you talk about the 60s, the 70s, 80s, you got birth control, you got women going into the workforce, okay? Dramatic changes on the family front. I was born in 1980 at a time when the birth rate was pushing about 16. That is 16 births per a 1,000 people. We're at 11 now. Um, and the trend is not your friend when you talk about that, man. And, you know, you talk, Japan's been talking about it for some time. I think they're at, I pulled up Japan. This is just a quick chart. Not even sure I'm getting it. Macro, Macrotrends.net. Uh, I'm not familiar with that internet destination. But nonetheless, you back up Japan, you see the spike high of 1973 at 19. Boy, they're sitting at seven, okay? But the trend continues. It's going to be interesting to see how that shapes thing. Now, that's just the birth rate that they're talking about and that can cause some serious problems as we've seen with japan right where what do you have then you have an aging older population that does not have the expanding younger younger population to drive the workforce to i mean social security for example right All, everything that plays out in a business uh business in a program like that labor force participation rate and here's the thing okay it shouldn't, you know, ideally you would want to get to a point that less people have to work and be slaves to the workforce, okay? So I don't have a problem with the labor force particip participation rate going down because in general you want society to get better. Maybe you have generational wealth on more friends that's passed over, but nonetheless declining across the board, okay? And then the last one, average, and it might be average hourly earnings, that should be going up. You could probably make the case it's going up. I'd love to see that one. Um, right next to where uh, 
C-suite employees have going up. And then you have filling the void. This is the biggest case for immigration, okay? Um, if we didn't have immigration, folks, we would be in a big problem. That's one of the big things that actually helps us versus many countries, having immigration to bring workers in that can fill those voids, especially on the lower echelon of pay. <clears throat> Number of foreign-born workers in the U.S. workforce, quite the drop-off during COVID. We're now about $2 million over that number. Uh, immigration always gets political as it should, and I think we all agree that the politicians have to do something. Unfortunately, the devil's in the details, as always, but I thought some of those charts interesting. Uh, the one most interesting, I think, is that birth rate one, because, boy, that is a trend, man. You keep dropping from there. And it happens in every industrialization nation. I've seen Elon, and listen, I give Elon a, a lot of grief. I wouldn't trust him with uh, my cash for two seconds because it seems like he only cares about himself. And he is brilliant, and he has done many things great for civilization, okay, talking about pushing, whether it's uh, electric vehicles, whether it's pushing the space frontier with SpaceX, et cetera. But it also seems like he'll burn anybody in two seconds if he feels like it, talking about putting out numbers on Twitter, distorting the reality of where their company is going to be, et cetera. But what he talks about is, and it's right, industrialized nations, if your nation starts making it, man, people get money, <clears throat> they get flexibility, they get freedom. Yeah, they stop, they stop popping out babies at the same number, man. Okay, that's what happens. And across the board, it's happening. And it is a threat on a longer term basis, man. Elon thinks big picture. OK, and he's not looking at 10 years. He's not looking at 20. He's saying what happens when three or four hundred years goes by in a heartbeat, because that is a heartbeat in the terms of the time that our world or our countries, you know, that is a heartbeat of a moment in terms of what time really encapsulates. You can't even understand time. Uh, yeah, these trends are mammoth when you look at over a period of 40 to 60 years getting more than cut in half. OK, so interesting nonetheless as we go forward all right what else we got up here well you know what we'll talk about we'll talk a little bit of options folks we got a man teddy kegstat we got a webinar this wednesday coming up understanding and capitalizing on time with calendar stock option spreads i put the word understanding on there uh i'm looking forward to understanding it myself folks teddy is going to be doing a 60 minute webinar this will be wednesday from four till five eastern time this is a standalone product okay you're not signing up for his newsletter you're not signing up for a recurring subscription the cost for this one time 60 minute live webinar is 97 dollars. calendar spreads is what he'll be talking about and he's going to go through it for an hour, folks. And this is one of <clears throat> this is one of the strategies that not that I struggle with, but I do struggle with it a little bit. Just wrapping my brain fully around two different time horizons. OK, and this is a brief example up here of what your profit loss looks like. You're pegging a point in time that your max profit is going to give you that you go further to price. You're actually losing money. You go less. You're losing money. Um, it's not as simple as a simple buying a call spread where you're looking for the price to go up. Or maybe you're buying a put spread, you're looking for the price to go down. Maybe you're selling a call spread, you're trying to absorb premium on the upside because you think the stock might just stay where it is or go lower, right? Calendar, a little bit different, a little bit more complex. Uh, Teddy is big into options. He's already done one webinar talking about options, but he's looking forward to this one. Check it out. Sign up. Space is limited, folks, so reserve your space. There is a potential we can sell out in these because the room only really facilitates a certain number of people if we get to that level. So check it out. That'll be Wednesday at 4 o'clock. It'll be archived, so you can watch it as many times as you'd like. If you can't check it out all live, we'll talk to Teddy uh, right around this time on Wednesday morning, as we always do, 40 past the hour as well. And then he'll be in there live right after my dad's show, 4 till 5 p.m. Eastern time. Can you believe that Wednesday is September 27th? That's a, I can't believe we're coming into October, man. Halloween right around the corner. All right, this one's interesting from the journal just in terms of the type of money. How about the type of money that they got to pay for all these yachts and bills that they're holding? Assets taken from sanctioned Russian billionaires are costly to maintain. How about 28 grand a week to keep mold out of some of these ships, man? We all know that uh, boats can be expensive, but did you know that just 28 grand a week for some of these ships in terms of make sure they're maintained and make sure all that moisture on the sea isn't giving you mold? Uh, there it is, the Alpha Nero. Yeah, 28 grand a week, $120 million yacht the size of a football field. Uh, it's been sitting idly. No, excuse me. Yeah, 270 foot mega yacht. Um, one of the Russian oligarchs, magnets sanctioned by the US.
we'll go over some of these numbers, man, because you talk about some numbers, different stratosphere of wealth they're talking about. Stay tuned, folks. we got markets in negative territory. Oh, NASDAQ's green. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets catching a little bit of a bit on the opening bell. We're back to where we were basically almost at the close of Friday, right? You get the S&Ps only down by three. NASDAQ 100, you're off by 10. Dow off by 78. Russell sneaks into the positive there. 1796. You're a solid 16 points on the Russell from where we were trading this morning. Crude back under 90 bucks at 89.84. You got the gold contract flat at 19.45 this morning. We check in on notes and bonds pretty much at the lows. You did make it to 108.06. 108.06. We're trading at 108.09 right now in the 10-year. We talked about the 30-year with some context, man. We're sitting at 115.14. You were as low as 115.04 right now. Yields higher. Dollar index probably backed off a bit. Yeah, backed off, but barely, man. We just almost hit 106. Dollar strength across the board. All right, what do we got else? What? Excuse me. What else do we have pulled up? Uh, how about Amazon? They're getting into the AI game. Shouldn't be surprising. Invest up to $4 billion in Anthropic. As AI arms race escalates, the deal includes a broad partnership. I bet they wish they had invested $10 billion in open AI because that is paying dividends from Microsoft shares. But nonetheless, they're putting $4 billion into Anthropic, the latest big startup investment by the tech giants jockeying for an edge in the AI 
arms race, and this is going to go forever, man. You know, that's the one thing to be careful of, folks. Uh, it's not going to be over until it's over. Amazon up 1.3%. Not sure if that's uh, having anything to do with that deal. I doubt it. Amazon just catching a bit as we got these stocks trading a little bit higher. NASDAQ in the positive. Russell in the positive. S&Ps get back more than 20 points. We were at 43.38. When I started this program off, and the S&P has just jumped 23 points right now, uh, but as I mentioned, coming into that next meeting, folks, put it on your charts, 4,200 to 4,150 is where I'm looking for some price action. That's the area of consolidation we had for some time, and potentially that's where you get a little bit of a floor. It was a ceiling. An area of resistance could turn into an area of support, but boy, uh, the day is young. The week is young. I appreciate you tuning in to start off the trading week, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. We got our man Steve Rhodes coming up. We got, uh, excuse me, Larry Pezzavento, Fast Market. Tom O'Brien, my dad, live from 3 till 4. Markets in positive territory. Gotta love it, folks. Stay tuned. Basil's coming up next. Have a great Monday, everybody.